Hey, what is up guys? Today we are going to create our very own is grounded function. The reason we're doing this is because I'm getting a little bit annoyed of this bug where uh, I'm trying to jump but it doesn't jump because the uh, controller is grounded function is using physics and physics sometimes lies to us. Okay, so let's implement our own check to see if we are uh, grounded or not. This might be a little bit difficult to understand at first, but bear with me, we are going to go right inside our script. So we're still inside the player script, we are going to do our whole function in there, and uh, you're going to see it's going to be a little bit of uh, ray casting. If you haven't done any ray casting before, uh, now is a good time to learn it. Let's go ahead and declare ourselves a private bool that we're going to call is grounded. Actually, this is the same one as you see. Let's uh, call it something else. Is controller grounded? That sounds good. Okay, is controller grounded? We are going to take no parameter and let's open up these brackets. Okay, so basically, what needs to happen in this function is we are going to use raycast to detect are we hitting something with raycast. Um, basically, a raycast is Imagine you have two points in the world space, say a start point and an end point. You shoot a ray starting from the start point towards the end point, and it's going to detect if there is anything in between these two points. If it does uh, hit something, then it's going to return information on that very something. Okay, so to explain a little bit, actually not to explain, but to show you how this is made or how this works we are going to call debug.drawarray and this is going to show you what, what I'm talking about so this is going to put a visual representation of that ray so it's taking in parameter a vector3 start and also a vector3 direction so we're going to give it a start point so a origin point and also a direction for that ray um, we are going to do for the start point, controller dot center. Now this is our character controller. This is the green capsule uh, on top of our cube. So this thing over here, this green thing, uh, we are saying this thing dot center. So it is the really center of that capsule, and we're going to take the direction vector three dot down. So we're casting our ray downward. Now it also takes in a color, so I'm going to give it, say, color uh, green, so we can see it. Actually, green is the same color as a collider, so I'll use cyan instead. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this function and put it right inside of my update. This way it is going to be called every single frame, and every single frame we're getting a visual representation of that ray. So it's going to move with us. Okay. Now it says uh, this function does not always return uh, a boolean, so just go down here and type in return false. Okay, let's hit play. And now we should see that ray over here if I hit gizmo. Actually, I don't see it. Okay, never mind. Small mistake on my part here. We're not using controller.center, we're going to use uh, controller.bound.center. This way, we are going to follow uh, the capsule collider instead. So over here, as you can see, this is my ray. Now I've hidden my player, but let's just turn it back on. It's over here, and um, as you can see, it follows. Well, you can't really see it. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Actually, I'll, I'll hide this uh, cube. So it follows my character around because the start position is the center of that very capsule and it's a ray that goes downward so it starts right in the middle of that cube and it goes downward we can see it over here okay so in order to test collision what we are going to do is we are going to take that ray that starts here we're gonna say instead of starting here you are going to start on the very left of our controller at the bottom of his feet so around here and we are still going to cast our ray downward and we're gonna say okay are you hitting the floor if you are then we are grounded and we're going to do the same thing with the right side of that capsule 
So try to bear with me, I'm going to write this code right now. So the first thing I will need is the start position for that very ray. So I'm going to call this uh, actually left ray start and since we're there we're also going to declare the right ray start. Now these two I'm going I'm going to assign these two um, as the center of the controller that we uh, that we just used. So basically the ray you just saw, we're going to assign those two to the exact same ray we just saw. And then I'm going to play with their parameters. So now they're both in the center of that capsule, so they're both right in the middle. Now I'm going to do left ray start dot x, because this is a vector 3, is equal to, actually is going to be plus equal to controller dot bound dot extent dot x. Okay, that sounds a little bit complicated like this, but bounds dot extent dot x is basically the radius in x of that capsule. So we're getting, um, in this case, 0 0.5 because it is a radius. So this is going to work. Now let's do the same thing with the right ray. So basically take this and instead of doing um, Actually, I got it wrong. Instead of doing plus equal here, we're doing minus equal. And with the right ray, we do plus equal. Okay, cool. So now let's go ahead and um, look at this in the debug.draw ray. So the left one is going to be red, and the right one is going to be green. Uh, green. So we're going to give it the left ray start and this one's going to take the right ray start so we're changing the ray start position but we're still angling them downward let's hit play to see how it works now and as you can see over here if I select my player as you can see we're right on the very extent of those so on the uh, maximum X of that capsule. Now what happens if I modify my radius at runtime, say we get a power route that increases the size of our player? It still works, it still scales, which is pretty much what we want and what we need. Okay, now what do we need to do actually? If we go back to this uh, visual representation of our vector, 0 0.5, we need to change a few things around. So. Okay, so now to proceed, what we need to do is we need to cast this ray at the exact same point of defeat and maybe a little buffer, like say 0.1 after defeat. Now we know that uh, our ray is starting right from the center of that capsule, so say we're trying to uh, put a different height, so maybe 2, then that ray is going to start right in the middle over here if you can't see it. Uh, it it's right in the middle of the, ca of the capsule, so what we need to do is basically we need to tell this ray okay you're gonna have a length of half my capsule so in this case half of two and yep so let's just go ahead and do that in the code right now we are not actually casting the ray we're just uh, making a visual representation of it but we are going to go down here actually and cast it and the way we do it is we call the physic namespace dot um, raycast and we gotta give it a either a ray or a origin and a direction. We're going to give it a origin and direction because that's uh, what we put for a draw ray. So the first one is left ray start the direction is going to be vector 3 dot down again now uh, it's taking additional parameters such as max distance and we are going to need this one so make sure that the max distance is controller whoop, dot height divided by 2 and I'm going to put these in parentheses because we're going to give it a buffer, a small buffer of say uh, 0.2f so the length of our ray is, go be, is going to be half of the uh, player height and then we give it a additional 0 0.2 so we make sure that he uh, he has some playroom over there okay and I think that's about it 
Now, physic.raycast returns a boolean. That boolean pretty much just says, are we hitting something, yes or no. So you gotta put this in between a if statement, just like this. And if we hit something, then return true. Now, why exactly do we do that is because this is a function we call is controller grounded, and it returns a bool. So we are going to call this function, and if it hits something, if we are in collision with something, then we are returning true for. Um, well, basically, this means yes, we are grounded because we uh, we've hit something with our ground checking ray. Now, make sure you do this again for the. Oh, little bug here. Make sure you do this again for the right ray. So I'm going to use the right ray start, same values, and that's pretty much it. This is a really simple way to check if we are grounded or not. And we are going to implement it right now by taking this function, copy it, and we're going to remove the controller is grounded up here. Let's replace it for our own is grounded function, just like this. All right, now let's go try this out in game. Oh, I'm gonna reactivate my player capsule, or player mesh, sorry. And now we should be grounded. And we are, because we can jump. Now, as you can see over here, we get a, a small room, and that's because of my uh, 0 0.2 buffer. So if you wanna have a smaller room over here, then just reduce the uh, buffer I've put over here. But for me, that's okay, because we don't really see our player from that close while we're playing the game. Uh, even if we maximize this, let's try it out. We don't really see that he's not touching. Well, maybe just a little bit, but we can fix that later on. Okay, so now we know we're grounded. Uh, and we know we're always grounded, because if you try to jump now, it's it's always going to work. So we don't get that uh, physic bug. Okay. Well, that's pretty much it for this episode, guys. We just implemented our very own is grounded function. That's pretty exciting stuff, actually. Before we end this, there's another little bug that I wanted to fix. Uh, whenever we wall jump, sometimes we don't get the jump force like we're supposed to. So, what we're going to do is we're going to change our code a little bit. And I know exactly where the area is. It's around here when we do our wall jump. Um, again, a small mistake on my part, we're doing move vector dot y is equal to jump force. Instead of doing that, we are going to do vertical velocity is going to equal to jump force. That's what we should have done before, but again, small mistake on my part. Now let's hit play again, and we always get that upward motion now, which is great. Okay, alright guys. Well guys, that's pretty much it for this episode. If this was helpful to you or if you learned something, please leave it a like. Also, subscribe for more tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.